In a previous video, we examined the claim made by WMO that record levels of heat trapping gases mean further temperature increase. The claim was made for the specific five years from 2018 to 2022, so we examined that period. Carbon dioxide concentration levels did increase. Methane concentration levels did increase. Nitrous oxide concentration levels did increase. But over the same period, 2018 to 2022, global average temperature was subject to a cooling trend of minus 0.2 degrees Celsius per century. With some regions, such as Oceania, having a very pronounced cooling trend, this result raised significant doubts about the greenhouse gas and climate change hypothesis that increased levels of the gases, carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide causes a correlated increase in global average temperature. To remove or amplify these uncertainties, we decided to conduct a global level analysis of the greenhouse gas hypothesis covering the entire post-industrial period, 1850 to 2022. That period split quite naturally into four segments. As usual, we are guided by the Nobel laureate Richard Feynman. In general, he says, we look for a new law by the following process. First, we guess or hypothesize it. And then we compare the guess or hypothesis to nature. In other words, we compare it to experiment or experience to see if it works. We are going to compare the greenhouse gas global warming hypothesis to experience to see if it works. If the greenhouse gas hypothesis disagrees with experience, it's wrong. That's all there is to it. In that simple statement is the key to science. We start with the period 1850 to 1936. Not to jump ahead too much, but the next period, 1937 to 1978, is well discussed in the climate literature and is recognized as a period where no global warming took place. 1850 to 1936, however, is much less discussed, but is very interesting and very revealing. Over that period, carbon dioxide concentrations increased. By the way, occasionally the period covered may not be an exact fit, as here, 1850 to 1937. This is because sometimes there is not an exact match with the data records. The atmospheric concentrations of methane also increased. The atmospheric concentrations of nitrous oxide also increased. So, if the hypothesis is correct, when we examine the experience over the same period, we should expect something like 87 years of warming and an increase in global average temperature. This is the chart for global average temperature from 1850 to 1936. In fact, the global average temperature during that 87 year period saw a cooling negative trend of minus 0.11 degrees Celsius per century. There is more to be revealed over and above that simple fact. If we turn our attention to the period highlighted in red, from 1850 up to 1909, the globe experienced a negative global temperature trend of minus 0.25 degrees Celsius per century. This cooling resulted in the decadal mean global temperature of the early 20th century, that's 1900 to 1909, being cooler than greater than 95% of the Holocene. This was discovered by the Marcotte study that produced a reconstruction of global temperature for the past 11,300 years. In this channel community's next video, we will further examine the full relevance and implication of this fact. 
For now, we cannot resist pointing out just one more thing before returning to our subject. This chart from the Marcotte study shows Holocene global mean surface temperature anomalies from around 9000 BC to around 1920 AD. The anomalies are with respect to the mean of period 1961 to 1990, expressed in degrees Celsius. This is roughly the period 1900 to 1909. It can be confirmed just by looking at the chart that Marcotte is accurate when he, he asserts that the decadal mean global temperature of 1900 to 1909 was cooler than greater than 95% of the Holocene distribution. There is another way of looking at that fact, which gives an even more remarkable perspective. And that is to turn around the statement and instead of saying 1909 was cooler than greater than 95% of the Holocene, we instead say that approximately 95% of the Holocene distribution was warmer than the global temperature of the early 20th century 1900 to 1909. We take it one step further and look at how much of the Holocene was warmer than the anomaly period of 1961 to 1990. We restrict the graph to display that segment of the Holocene only. We find that from 9200 BC to 1160 AD, that is for more than 10,000 years, the pre-industrial Holocene was warmer than the post-industrial period 1961 to 1990. This channel community's next video will have much more to say on this, but for now, having got that off our chest, we can return to the period 1850 to 1936. After reaching this low global average temperature of 1900 to 1909, there was gradual warming so that by 1936, the global temperature had bounced back to approximately that of 1850. There had been no increase in global temperature. From 1850 to 1836, that is for 87 contiguous years, increased levels of greenhouse gases did not cause an increase in global average temperature as the hypothesis predicts. The hypothesis thus disagrees with experience and is therefore wrong. The next period to be examined is that of 1937 to 1978. Carbon dioxide concentrations increased, methane concentrations increased nitrous oxide concentrations increased. This graph displays the global average temperature, 1937 to 1978. There was a warming at the beginning of the period, but then temperatures bounced up and down to a moderate degree. The net result was a global cooling trend of minus 0.05 degrees Celsius per century. We conclude that the hypothesis did not agree with experience. This conclusion is backed by the fact that this period of cooling was well recognized by climate scientists. This article notes that from 1940 to about 1975, the average global surface temperature decreased by about 0.1 degrees Celsius. The dates specified are very slightly different to our period under examination, but in fact show an even steeper cooling trend of minus 0.23 degrees Celsius per century, which reinforces the conclusion that for this period, the hypothesis fails the comparison to nature and experience and is therefore wrong. 1979 to 2015. 
carbon dioxide concentrations from 1979 to 2015 increased. Methane concentrations increased. Nitrous oxide atmospheric concentrations increased. This is the global average temperature chart for 1979 to 2015. There was a stumble of eight years at the beginning of that period where a temporary negative trend of minus 1.06 prevailed. But overall, the trend was one of warming at a linear rate of plus 1.6 degrees Celsius per century. For this period, it is objective to say the hypothesis does agree with experience. We arrive at the most recent period, 2016 to 2022. Following the immediately previous period, during which global average temperature increased, carbon dioxide atmospheric concentrations from 2016 to 2022 increased. Methane concentrations increased. Nitrous oxide concentrations increased. If the greenhouse gas hypothesis is correct, you would therefore expect a pronounced increase in global average temperature. But instead, from 2016 to 2022, the global average temperature steadied and began a negative cooling trend of minus 1.39 degrees Celsius per century. For this most recent period, the greenhouse gas and global warming hypothesis therefore disagrees with experience. Our conclusion is straightforward. If we bring together the results from 1850 to 2022, over that period of 173 years, the greenhouse gas hypothesis agreed with experience for 36 years, but disagreed with experience for 137 years. Overall, therefore, the hypothesis disagrees with experience. It is therefore wrong. To ward off any criticism that the relatively short time of 173 years since 1850 is too short a time to reach such a judgment, this channel community's next video will examine the roughly 12,000 years of the pre-industrial Holocene and will not only identify periods of thousands of years where no greenhouse gas global warming correlation took place, but will also expose serious problems in the current climate models that are being relied upon to predict the so-called net zero climate future. If you enjoyed this video, you are invited to join our community on locals.com. This link will take you directly to our site.